السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله صدق الله العظيم سورة علي إمران نفد القرآن أن الله سبحانه وتعالى speaks about the creation of this ummah of Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام and he says that this is the best this is the best religious community ummah which has been created for the sake of mankind created for the sake of mankind what is it that makes them the best he mentions three things First of all, they have faith in Allah. And in consequence of having faith in Allah, Iman, they engage or they pursue a mission, which is number two, Amar bil ma'ruf, and number three, Nahi anil munkar. When these three are there you are the best what then is amar bil ma'ruf and what is nahi anil munkar for this is the manifestation that you have faith in Allah amar bil ma'ruf is if it is the truth if it is right if it is just, if it is virtuous, then stand up for it. Stand up for it. And nahi anil munkar. If it is false, if it's a lie, if it's unjust, if it's oppression, then stand up against it. This is what makes you the best. Don't say, <laughs> I can't do that. Because if I do that today, I'll have to pay a price. The price is, <laughs> I might lose my job. And my job is more important to me than being the best. If I do that today, then I put my name on a no-fly list, then I can't travel anymore. And it is more important for me to have the freedom to travel than to stand up 
for what is right and stand up against what is wrong and evil and unjust. I can't do that because if I do that they're going to say I'm a terrorist. Allah created an ummah to produce men, not boys. He created an ummah which he said is the best because it would produce those who have faith in Allah. Like the young men in Surah al kahf of the Quran. When they stood up for the truth against a society and a community which had turned away from Allah and was engaged in shirk, for example, to make haram what Allah made halal, that is shirk, it's there in Surah Al Tawbah. It is there in Surah Al Tawbah. If you make haram, what Allah made halal, you commit shirk. And if you make halal what Allah made haram, you commit shirk. That is in Surah Al Tawbah of the Quran. All through history, mankind observed the laws that Allah gave to us until this modern age. When a girl has reached the age of puberty and she now has the monthly cycle, you no longer say that she's a child, do you? No, she's no longer a child. She now has to cover. <laughs> and when she has reached the state of rushed, that if you give her the money for the home, she won't play dolly house with it. Now she has reached the stage where she can be married. And that's the age that Maryam alayhi salam reached when Allah sent the angel to her to say to her, you're going to have a baby boy. But today she has to be 18 years of age before she can be married. A godless government, not only here in this country, but all around the world, even in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan <laughs> and in Malaysia, in Algeria, around the world. She has to be 18 before she can be married. Prior to that, it is not permissible. They prohibit what Allah has permitted. Of course, she can have sexual relations. It's not against the law. She can even have an abortion, two, three, four, before the age of 18. That's not bad. That's not wrong. No, there's no law against that. But she cannot get married. And in an age when there is a sexual revolution all around us, and the hormones of young men are exploding, they don't know what to do. In that age, you're going to make a law to say that if she's under the age of 18, she cannot be married. You've made haram, but Allah has made halal. And that is sure. But how many, how many are there who recognize that? They study so many things. But in this strange age, they will not study the book of Allah. When it is right and virtuous and just stand up for it. And when it is wrong and unjust and oppressive stand up against it. Regardless of the price you have to pay. That makes you the best of all. Three times in the Quran. Allah has commanded us, don't rip off people. وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ Don't rip them off. Do not take their wealth from them unjustly. 
until eventually, eventually, eventually you have everything and they have nothing. And you driving the BMWs and they still have nothing. Don't do that, says Allah. وَلَا تَبْخَسُ النَّاسَ أَشْيَاءَهُمْ That's an act of oppression. To rip off people. To consume the wealth of others unjustly. It's an act of oppression. A hundred years ago or more, those who today rule the world had a plan of action to rip off mankind. To do that, they had to take control of money. They had to remove the money which Allah had ordained, which is in the Quran. Excuse this khatib. Who cares about the Quran today? Who cares about the Quran today? They had to take the money which is in the Quran and the money which is in the Sunnah and remove it from the market and then prohibit by law the use of that money. In the Quran we have the word dinar, but who cares about the Quran today? Kindly forgive this khatib who is 75 years of age and who has seen it all. In the Quran there is a word of dinar, which is a gold coin. And in the Quran there is the word dirham, which is a silver coin. Gold and silver. And tomorrow, the state of Israel will be using gold and silver as money. I pray to Allah that I should not live to see that day. Take me away from the world. The shame and the disgrace will be too great. I don't want to live to see that day. When this Ummah, which is the best, has betrayed Allah and his messenger to such an extent that the state of Israel will restore gold and silver as money. And then we, like blind sheep, will follow them. In the Quran there is dirham and dirham is a silver coin and so they made it har haram to use gold as money. It's there in the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund. But who cares about knowledge today? People have more important things about that. And then they gave us this money a hundred years ago. Paper money. And we got the fatwa, of course, that is halal. There were some scholars of Islam, yes, mashaAllah, may Allah bless them, but there were few who stood up a hundred years ago and said, no, this is bogus, this is fraudulent, this is haram. But the establishment accepted it. The established scholars accepted it. And so, the Ummah of Muhammad والسلام, betrayed Allah and his messenger. How can you take a piece of paper and print a picture on it and give it a, a number and give it a fictitious value and then use that piece of paper to buy a chicken? That's a ripoff. Only they can do it. And when they print their paper, they call it hard currency. And they can use it anywhere in the world. You cannot do business without their paper. They want to send money from this place to that place. You have to use their paper. You want to buy and sell. You have to use their paper. And when we print our paper, because we also want to commit the act of shirk. And you take a basket full of Pakistani rupees to Midtown Manhattan, you can't even buy a cup of coffee with it. So they, are the, they have a monopoly on money. That's their paper money. And of course, they ripped us off. And this Khatib has studied the subject, so he knows. He's not talking through his hat. 
If you want to know something about paper money, you've got to study international monetary economics. They don't teach that in the Darul Ulum. So our brothers who graduated from the Darul Ulum, they have no knowledge of the subject. No. And yet they give fatwa. We have to use the mimbar to explain and teach the subject. So that when we are in the grave, no one can say, I did not know. Because of that monetary system of paper money, today Algeria is miserably poor and Morocco is miserably poor and Egypt is miserably poor and Indonesia is miserably poor and Pakistan is miserably poor and Bangladesh is miserably poor. Shall we continue? It's already done. The rip-off has already taken place. And yet, you can't hear a khutbah on the subject. No. But they have time to pick up boxing gloves and fight miserable fights over popcorn and peanuts. What will Allah do? What will Allah do to them? who have abandoned the quest for knowledge and who are sleeping while the world is ripping off the Ummah of Muhammad والسلام, and all the rest of mankind. That happened a hundred years ago and we were not alive at that time. So we do not bear a responsibility for it. But today is different. We are alive today. And at this time, we know within another year or two, all the paper money in the world will be demonetized. Meaning, you can't use it as money anymore. Uh, one year ago, India demonetized the two biggest notes, 1,000 rupees and 500 rupees, and gave the Indian people just a small amount of time. You have to go to the bank, and provided you can prove that this is halal money, <laughs> as you paid your taxes on it, the bank will open an account and you'll keep it there in your account for you. And if a certain amount of time expires and you didn't do it, you can use your paper money as wallpaper. And millions of Indians were ripped off one year ago because they're too scared to go. They did that because Wall Street wanted to use India as a case study for the eventual elimination of all paper money so that a new monetary system will come to the world in which money will be invisible, you can't see it. Money will be intangible, you can't touch it. The money in the world will be all electronic money or digital money. And now we have a new term, cryptocurrencies. They don't teach the subject in the Darul Ulum. Is this money halal or haram? Today's khutbah invites all those who are present, who have love for Islam and fear of Allah in their hearts to go and ask the scholars of Islam. Go and ask them. Go and ask your Maulana or your Mufti in whom you have some confidence. Ask him, is this money that's coming, is it halal or is it haram? And I don't want an answer word to mouth because a legal opinion must be backed up with proof. So it must be written. A legal opinion is called a fatwa, a legal opinion. Hmm? And when a legal opinion is broadcast, then we examine it. And then if the other scholars of Islam accept it, it is not challenged, then the qadi or the judge will now accept it and it becomes law. That's the value of a legal opinion or a fatwa. And so today's khutbah invites all those who are present 
to show integrity, to show faith, to show love for Islam, and to show fear of Allah. By going and asking your scholars, is this cryptocurrency like Bitcoin that's coming? Malaysia has already made it legal tender. Iran wants to make it legal tender. And the others are probably going to follow suit. Is it halal or is it haram? And if they say we don't know, because some scholars of Islam do have integrity, mashallah. And if they don't know, they say, I, I don't know. Then ask them, who can we go to to find out whether or not this money is halal or haram? In the little time that we have left, let us take a look and see what does the Quran say and what does the Sunnah say concerning the money which is now coming to the world. Cryptocurrencies, electronic money, digital money. First of all, what is money in Islam? The Quran says that it was sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to explain all things. Tibiyanan likulli shay to explain all things. So there must be an explanation in the Quran for what is money. And yes, there is. Allah speaks about dinar, which is a gold coin. And Allah speaks about dirham, which is a silver coin. He also speaks about kintar, which is a treasure, about 1,200 gold coins. But in Surah Al-Kaf of the Quran, he speaks about Warwick, the young man fled in the cave and they slept for 300 years. And after 300 years, they woke up and uh, you naturally will be hungry after 300 years. So they chose one of them, فَبَعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِكِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى Madina. Madina here is not the city in, in Saudi Arabia. Madina is a city. So choose one of them and give him this money. And go buy some food. After 300 years, the money could still buy the food. The money successfully stored its value. Gold does that. Silver does that. A successful store of value. So money is not just for a medium of exchange. Money is not just for measuring value. But money is also for storing value. When this Khatib was five years of age, his father bought a car, Hillman Minx, to take me to school. That was 70 years ago. And he used to take me to the Shagornas market. And at the age of five, I have a little basket in my hand. And I saw my father buying oranges in the market. He used to have sugar bag made out of jute in those days. Now it's all petrochemicals. <laughs> and he bought a hundred oranges in the Shagornas market, wholesale price, for one dollar. Yes, so I take the one dollar, 70 years ago, I put it in a little box and I lock it up. And then I take it out today. And when I take it out today, the one dollar can't even buy one orange. Can this be money which cannot store value? Surah al Kaf is speaking to us. And in Surah al Kaf also, a man was dying and leaving orphans behind. And he had some wealth he wanted to leave for his children, his orphans. He couldn't find anyone trustworthy. The last age is like that. You can't find people who are trustworthy. So he dug a hole. It's there in Surah Al-Kaf. Go check it out. And he buried it. 
And then he built a structure on top of it, a wall. And because the wall was crumbling, Allah ordered his servant Khidr salam, to go and build, rebuild the wall to protect that money. Allah ordered him. Can you bury electronic money? Money you can't see? Money you can't... And this is Surah Al-Kaf of the Quran talking. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, we do not have the time to teach the subject in the khutbah. He said, listen to this pivotally, pivotally, pivotally important hadith of Sahih Bukhari. He said, when a transaction is based on an exchange of gold for gold, or silver for silver, when a transaction is based on an exchange of gold for gold, or silver for silver, or wheat for wheat, or barley for barley, or dates for dates, or salt for salt. Once it is like for like, it must be equal for equal, and hand to hand, otherwise it will be riba. And riba is a big, 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 big sin. Yes, Allah sent down the very last revelation in the Quran to declare war on riba. Very last revelation in the Quran to declare war on riba. And the Prophet والسلام, cursed. He cursed all four and he said they're all equally guilty. And if we have the curse of a prophet upon us, we can perform our salat, it will not be accepted. We can make hajj, it will not be accepted. We can give zakat, it will not be accepted. We can fast in Ramadan, it will not be accepted. He said that they are all equally guilty, all four. The one who takes riba, the one who gives riba, the one who records the transaction and the two witnesses. Riba. One form of riba, of course, is borrowing and lending money on interest. And the other form of riba is to rip off people. So, unless it is like for like, if it is like for like, unless it is equal for equal, if you have one ounce on this side, you must have one ounce on that side. And it must be hand to hand, meaning it cannot be a credit transaction. It must be a cash transaction. Otherwise, it will be riba. So this is an important hadith. What is common to all six? Gold, silver, wheat, barley, dates, and salt. What is common to all six? Answer, they were all used as money. When there is a shortage of gold and silver in Medina, in the market, they would use dates as money. Yes. And so now we have a definition of money in Islam, in the Quran and in the Sunnah. That money from the Quran and money from the Sunnah, we're not talking about Columbia University, we're talking about the Quran and the Sunnah is always either precious metals or commodities of food consumption, which is in an abundant supply in the market and which have a shelf life. You can't use animals as money because an animal can die, an animal can fall ill. And so when Bilal radiallahu ta'ala and who came and offered the Prophet والسلام, some dates, and the Prophet looked at the dates and he said, Bilal, these are very high quality dates, where did you get them? Bilal said, O Messenger of Allah, I had two kilograms of inferior quality dates and I exchanged them for this one kilogram of superior quality dates. Fair exchange. Bilal said the Prophet, this is the essence of riba. An unequal exchange of dates. He said, you should have sold the two kilograms and take that money and buy the one kilogram. That's okay. 
but a direct exchange of dates for dates for, which was unequal is riba. Why? Because you open the door for the money lender to come with one kilogram and he lend it to you, you've got to repay, repay with two kilogram, a loan on a hundred percent interest. And so money in Islam is always either precious metals or commodities of food consumption which, have, which are in abundant supply in the market and which have a shelf life. Number two, money in Islam always has intrinsic value. The value of the money is inside the money. It's not fictitious. It's not in George Soros's pocket. It always has intrinsic value and the value is created by Allah. These questions are going to be posed in the grave. So we better prepare ourselves for the grave. The Prophet ﷺ warned about Akhir al-Zaman. You know when you're living in Akhir al-Zaman or the last stage. You know it. Because he says women will be dressed and yet naked. You know when you're living in Akhir al-Zaman because he said women will be dressed like men. Assuming the functional role of men in society. He said men will be dressed like women. Not only to attract another man, but also because they abandon their functions as men. To maintain a wife, to maintain children. No, no, so social security will do that. You know you're living in Akhir Zaman. When they're competing with each other and building high-rise buildings. You know you're living in Akhir Zaman when the masajid are grand structures. Yesterday was mud wall and karat roof. And when the rain fell, it used to leak. And then comes an age when the masjid is a grand structure. Millions of dollars, but devoid of guidance. You know you're living in Akhir Zaman at that time, the last age. And this is a hadith al-Qudsi. It's not from the Prophet, Islam, it's from Allah. And it is in Sahih Bukhari and is repeated four times that in Akhir al Zaman, 999 out of every 1000 will enter into the hellfire. If that does not wake us up, nothing will wake us up. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may put into our hearts a sufficient amount of integrity now to inquire where are we going in the world of money? We want to understand this subject and we want guidance. Is cryptocurrency, is digital money, is electronic money, is it halal or is it haram? We want an answer. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim innahu tabaraka wa ta'ala jawadun kareemun qadeemun malikun barru al-Ra'uf al-Rahim wa rabbu al-Halim Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'amalina man yahdihillahu falamudillala wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la wa nashhadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyina ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو إن يا كريم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب النار ونعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا والممات ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض 
يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله اكبر اقيموا الصلاه Still, Yerhamni, or Yerham Kumullah, please look down and see that the line is straight and there are no spaces in between that we may earn Allah's mercy. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een Ihdina sirat al-mustakeen Sirat al-lazina na'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانَ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَى كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدًا ثُمَّ أَنَابْ قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَالْحَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِّنْ بَعْدِهِ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً وَحَيْسُ أَصَابٍ وَشَيَاطِينَ كُلَّ بَنَّاءٍ وَغَوَّاسٍ وَآخَرِينَ مُكَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ هَذَا أَطَاؤُنَا فَمْنٌ أَوْ أَمْسِكْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا لَزُلْفَى وَحُسْنَ مَآبَ Allahu Akbar سمي الله لمن حمله Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Siratal ladhina na'amta alayhim Ghayril maghdubi alayhim waladdallin Amin 
Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah Rabbi, Bukadzimah Wa la hawla wa la hawla